should have put the people back on. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's ni Hi. nice to have you here. I'm Philip Beither. I'm the curator for performing arts here at the Walker. And to my left is Eiko and Koma. And, uh, you know, I want to just mention, if you'd like, feel free to come on down a little bit. We can't see you that well, but we'd love to have you close if you'd like to. <laughs> um, and there will be, this is a, a chance uh, for us to have a conversation. And I, I, for those of you who may be, maybe not glanced at the program yet, um, let me give you a little bit. Um, this is so great because rarely when I ask people to move down, does anyone ever do it? And so uh, thank you all for coming down. Um, Eiko and Koma met in Japan in 1971. Um, they were law and political science students, and uh, they began doing some work with uh, Tatsumi Hijikata, uh, and they studied with Kazuo Ono, and they began to experiment together with performance work, um, which then grew into an ongoing partnership. Um, they, they decided to travel to Hanover, Germany, to study new, down, new towns and the Bauhaus movements, and they landed in New York City in the mid-1970s. Uh, they made their first major piece, White Dance, in 1976, invited there uh, by the Japan Society in New York. And they've been touring actively all over the country, in fact, all over the world um, since that time. They've established some really key sustaining relationships uh, with some major uh, dance and, and uh, contemporary art uh, presenters, including uh, the American Dance Festival, um, and starting in 1981, the Walker Art Center. It was in 1986 that they first performed at another important venue for them, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, and that was where I first had the chance to witness their work. Um, they've created, a, in these ensuing years, a remarkable body of work that embraces theatrical creations, video, um, groundbreaking video dances, installations, site-based works, and global collaborations. Um, we have here at the Walker Art Center have been able to enjoy a fantastic history with these, these artists. Um, it's, it's, it's run over four separate curators from the Performing Arts Department here. Um, it's involved uh, multiple residencies, six major commissions, um, and nearly 30 years. The artists have won uh, multiple awards, the 1984 Guggenheim Fellowship, um, uh, many Bessie Awards, and in 1996, a MacArthur Genius Grant. Um, as well as an, a 2006 Dance Magazine Award. And in the very first round of the USA Artist Fellowships, um, they were included in that prestigious um, group of artists. Last spring, they launched the start of a three-year retrospective of their work. Um, and um, as part of that effort, we here at the Walker uh, are lucky enough to have Eko and Coma here for what I, I think may be the longest artist residency in our history. So uh, it's a really, I mean, usually artists come and go you know, for a week or maybe two, three at the longest. So you know, it's a tremendous pleasure for me and I think for many of us in the Twin Cities to have you here with us for such a nice length of time. Just this morning, um, with the living installation that Eko and Coma have created in our gallery spaces, gallery two of our permanent collection, we got to witness um, the first kind of showing and it was stunningly beautiful. Um, it's why you see a, a smile on my face and a great <laughs> sense of joy. Um, it was um, like their staged works, uh, um, uh, remarkably uh, riveting and, um, and, uh, and completely um, uh, capt a captivating experience. So I really hope you'll have a chance to come back, not just once, but many times, to visit um, Eko and Coma performing in the gallery spaces with their new work, Naked. So jumping into um, Naked, uh, I, I would love to, to hear about the, your interest in returning after 12 years, having made your first living installation at the Whitney, um, back into a gallery setting. Um, you've referred to it sometimes as, in some ways, this is another site-specific performance. Um, but but what, what attracted you and what um, maybe were the, both the joys and the challenges of creating your work in a museum setting like this? Was it 12 years ago? Yeah. You know, that means we are 12 years younger, you know? <laughs> so now, and of course, uh, since then, I lost in you know, lots of muscle tones, as I told you this morning. <laughs> so, you know, when we become naked, we have to put lots of stuff, you know, makeup, heavy makeup, <laughs> and, uh, you know, posture, some certain posture, I cannot do it anymore. You know? Yeah. 
I'm 62. Two. And when I finish this one, three weeks now, I'll be 63. <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah. no, no, no. You just become six. Oh, but I feel <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, but a year may go by <laughs> in a matter of a month. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, so that's you know also the, I want to challenge you know because you know little bit we get the mature age and uh, concept wise when we did that Whitney, mm -hmm. you know uh, really we are young we are yeah. young even two years ago we are young so you know. Actually, we didn't know, even though we were there eight hours every day. We were eight hours, yeah, seven, not six hours. Seven. seven hours, seven hours every day. But still, I didn't get it, why we were doing it, you know. But now, after two years doing this naked piece, I, I, I think, you know, you're, I know you are smiling. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I was smiling. Yes, this is a thing, you know, I really wanted you know, to do, you know. I want to do B. You know, that kind of feeling I have. Yeah. But when I did Whitney, I didn't have too much, you know, just, you know, I shouldn't say confidence, but, you know, still I was... You were really about, experimenting. Yeah, I was experimenting. Yeah. yeah. And has those 12 years since really informed your practice in a completely different way that, that you have now, you now are um, looking at this experience? Um, well, in a new 12 way. years ago, it really was one person's idea. It wasn't our idea, you know. There was one curator in Whitney, uh, whose name is Matthew Yakoboski, and he one day saw a performance 11 years prior to that. Uh -huh. And he really thought, I would love to see this in a museum. Hmm. There's something clicked. But he was very new, and he thought he cannot really tell those <coughs> things, and he said he had to wait. <coughs> and he told us, this is 11 years in my head. That's something he has always hmm. wanted to do. But we totally misunderstood, you know. We, <laughs> we did not know any of this. We thought, oh, museum is inviting us. Maybe our set making is so good that yeah. now we are actually <laughs> going into the museum. But no, he said, no, your piece needs your body. Mm. So it was really created very much in a response to his own ideas. Mm. And he, you know, I really credit him for that big, nice push. Right. And then after that, he pretty much left us alone to make whatever we, but since it was so new for us the idea, because we really were conditioned to how to begin the piece, how the middle, how to surprise sure. ourselves, how to end the piece, how to ruffle up, how to put it together. But this is all very different idea. Right. So we kind of chickened out. Um, we thought what Eko and Koma do on stage is like about, oh, Eko's solo, Koma comes in, Eko and Koma disseparate. How do you they get together? We couldn't do this for seven hours. Mm. So we solved it by always one of us being in a piece. Mm. So it, it's very different from this one that right. we are going to about to start. Mm -hmm. Because in a way, we were kind of testing it. Sure. You know, and it, it, was a, it was a wise way to do this because it really made me see coma in the installation. Mm. And I have to say it was a very beautiful thing that I I was actually very moved by seeing it. Right. So that experience, now I can kind of see, OK, now if it's two of us, how does this work? Uh -huh. So this is a very different step. That's why I was telling you, oh, we can, now we cannot see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we cannot <right>. see. <laughs> so we were your extra eyes right. this morning. Well, you know, uh, one of the things that people often comment about your work is how it radically changes one's sense of time. Um, you, you often in your work, there's a, there's a slow movement pace, and it brings people, it really changes your sense of how time is unfolding. Here, unlike a staged work where it might be an hour or 90 minutes long, you have six hours and you have a month. Mm -hmm. How is that kind of radical difference of your own time in the, in the performing of a work? Cha change how, how you live in that space or what you do with a piece like Naked? Yeah, definitely, you know, the, um, being in a gallery space is different, totally different feeling, which usually we have in the theater space. Here, see, like now we have special light on, right. on us. Yeah. You know, I want to see, I'm sure I can see some of our friends over there, but, you know, still. Maybe they can put maybe, maybe, okay, <laughs> Could you bring up a little bit? Yes, yes, there we go. Then I can Hi. see, you know, oh, he's there, <laughs> joins here, you know, I can, yeah. you know. But theater usually, you know, how uh, this is our territory, that's your territory. You right. Know? But yeah. in the gallery space, you know, this morning, it's, you know, 
equally I could see where you're sitting, uh -huh. you're smiling, you know. We are really feel really you know, because also space is so intimate, you know, right. intimate. So you know. I tell you, we are naked. Feel busy. Don't don't scare them. Oh, <laughs> oh two of a naked body. Usually in the theater, about that far. Yeah, at the, the, at the, the gallery. What's the most like, nearest is? Gallery yeah. space in the uh, gallery space, somewhere around there. So if you feel, if we want to, <laughs> oh, almost, almost, you know. Don't, you don't touch. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't touch. That kind of feeling, naked body. Yeah, that, that's not so intended. So. But so close. Well, and I found that even though I knew intellectually from our many, so, more than a year of conversations about this work, that the movement would be very different feeling. Yeah, yeah again, yeah, um, sorry, yeah, going back But to uh, what was interesting was that by that intimacy and proximity, the smallest movements, even your breathing, became quite monumental feeling. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Did you, did you, you must have known that all mm -hmm. along. And, uh, now we know. Uh -huh. But originally when you told us, we actually thought, oh, maybe we should choreograph one month. Not the choreograph, right. the way that modern dance choreograph. But you know, we should like structure one month. Maybe one month should be a different time. We thought maybe one day should be structured differently. And so we even thought maybe we should bring something when you go to the bathroom, or maybe we should go to the in front of the right. Andy Warhol's picture and do something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we thought about many, many things. But then we really kind of calmed down after all those excitement. Yeah. You know, how to deal with Jasper Jones or Rauschenberg, you know, how to deal with this, mm -hmm. that. We kind of thought, well, really, like, let's say, calm down, mm -hmm. calm down, calm mm -hmm. down. And then we start to think about the time. What really is important, turning point is, again, it was the same with the Whitney, too. We just had to remember it. We have no idea and no control over when who comes when, right. and how long that person stays. So it seems to me it's very unfair to that person. If we are trying to structure one day, or a month, or a one hour, I felt we should kind of give the same, at least, variation, but the same quality at the bottom line mm -hmm. of the piece. I didn't want you know, person A coming at 11 o'clock see a totally different piece. Right than the person who comes at 4 o'clock. You know, I wanted to have enough bottom line. Yeah. That's something that people can go home and talk about. But then on the pitch, everything is changing mm -hmm. from moment to moment. Can I talk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the experience, you know, da da dancing, and dancing or being um, in the gallery space in the Whitney. Yes. Seven hours every day, one month. After that, finishing that project, Two of us, I mean, really, we didn't go back to the theater. You know, I felt theater is kind of cold, dark spot, you know. <laughs> because, you know, Whitney, imagine, on the same next door, we had a painting, or the what, a retrospect of uh, Andrea Wyeth, Wy 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 right. right. and right. upstairs, uh, George O'Keefe, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. So when I get tired, when I get, usually I get special pass from the museum, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. So I go there about 8 in the morning. <laughs> I go just by myself. Uh -huh. I go to O'Keefe's room. You know, of course we cannot bring a drink, a drink, but just I still stay here. Yeah. And watch. Uh -huh. I take a nap. You know, it's a very nice feeling. Mm. And here I'm getting. I, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Here I'm same thing. So yeah, so we are surrounded same. by, you know, the Andy Warhol, yeah. Jasper Jones. He Jasper left. Jones. He left. He left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to shift out uh, uh, one of the works yeah, in the permanent anyway, collection. You know, we have such a luxury, you know. Yeah, right. You know, we are sharing the space. Yeah. All those, you know, art piece and mm. passion, artistic passion, you know, with, I mean, with audience. And it's, it's very Which I should mention that, uh, uh, that part of the invitation also was our interest in, we think of you um, as artists who are very central to our history and that um, the numbers of commissions that, that have been awarded to Eco and Coma by the Walker is as many as almost anyone else who have come through uh, this program. And so when we were mounting the event horizon, this particular installation of our permanent collection, we were looking particularly at a, at a sense of, perf 
a performative sense of late 20th century and 21st century artwork. And um, there was also an embrace of the other disciplines of film and video right. and, and, and performing arts. And so in many ways, we consider your history with us as part of our permanent collection. So like the art, artwork that hangs on the wall that is owned by the Walker and is part of the collection, we consider this new commission as also part of our collection. Unfortunately, you, after a month, you go away. And That's right. You leave nothing. <laughs> right. For me, particularly last 10 days, I yeah. came here in the gallery space. It's very interesting. You know, Rauschenberg here and you know, Jasper Jones. I don't know the, their, their, their relationship. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. But somebody told me Rauschenberg was, oh, no. Jasper, same building. Rauschenberg, you know, they, they both two of us are living in the same building. Mm -hmm. And Rauschenberg was upstairs. And John, Jasper Jones was downstairs. You know that? In, yeah. yeah. You didn't know? Yeah. Well, yeah, they're, 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 they're in the same building. Oh, you mean when they, in New York? Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. And they both were involved in right. Cunningham's right. work over right. the years. Right, of course. So, you know, I'm sure they have the competitor, or they have to influence each and other. And friends. Yes. Right. You know, so, you know, it's, you know, somehow I can sense it, you know, seeing the both, you know, huh. painting. So the, so the artwork very, on the walls and that surrounds the environment yeah, is see, influencing of course, your thinking of course, somewhat? Of course. We really took it into the consideration. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were rehearsing this in New York in a studio, and everybody who comes to the studio, come on, always show like he already printed out everything in the exhibition. See, this is the next room here. This is next room here. We're right between here. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of nice because we prepared our mind this way, even right. though once we are here, it's very different. But uh, literally, when I'm lying down, I can kind of see uh, Jacqueline Onassis, the Jackie, you know, right. the, the Andy Warhol picture, Jack, which is literally, Jackies, yeah. you know, the other uh, side of the, uh, our drop. Yeah. You know, not only from just particular painting, I'm talking about, you know, artist, yeah. spirit, yes. the spirit, you know, right. somehow I can feel But each you know. picture has that, yeah. Yeah. you know, that yeah. coming from yeah, the, that, that, that part of the that history. That's what I don't know, but still I can imagine when <laughs> you know, Andy Warhol went to, he was 25, was yeah, 30, right. what he was thinking about yeah. his future, you know? Uh, how he came up to this position, you know? Right. To imagine those kind of processes, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, has there been any unique, well, there's always, of course, challenges with any new work, but in such a fairly unusual setting um, and in, in, the, in the aspect of a, working within the gallery walls of a museum, have there been some unique challenges you had to overcome? Um, well, the sound, sound mm -hmm. aspect, mm -hmm. you know, we actually, I spent a lot of time preparing the sound, uh, <laughs> sound score, and I think as of yesterday, we gave that entirely. Yes, um, it, just, it sort of has gone away. In <laughs> yeah. fact, I think everyone agreed that in many ways, silence and yeah. the dripping yeah. of yeah. water yeah. You know, is it's a, a, a It's a very big difference when we are rehearsing yeah. and constructing the piece on a small, you know, I mean, the same studio, same size studio, but in a, yeah. sort of like alone, in yeah. a solitude. To the walker, yeah. which is not only the paintings, but the people coming and talking right. yeah. and the tours yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. We're literally in uh, Mangudis. So any kind of soundscape that we wanted to prepare, which I did prepare, was almost too subtle mm. to right. make any sense of it right. and to go beyond and not make it subtle. That kind of started to destroy the piece. Yeah. So we kind of became more naked in mm. that. Naked in a in a metaphorical yeah. sense. Yeah, well, I mean we're naked to start with, sure. but this became. <laughs> <laughs> Could you talk about uh, the theme? You know, using nakedness in your work and why it's important to you, and and both the sort of metaphorical as well as the literal nakedness in this work. I don't remember when we named the piece naked. You well, the juice, uh, no, no, because of the juice, I hesitated. You know, there's a naked juice. juice yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I really, I really didn't want to name it. Actually, you, I remember when you changed your mind and said it's not going to be naked. And then a few weeks later, you said it, it will be naked. Again, right, so. right. And so. Um, but even the notion of being unclothed in a gallery space as part of the performance. Well, I mean, we didn't actually, original idea was we are literally more among the exhibition. So we were not going to be physically naked. Uh -huh. And then we thought maybe, you know, in our mind-wise, how to sum up what is important to us, which is always either the physically or not so physically we wanted to be naked. So we wanted to call it naked. And then we decided, then we thought about, okay, now we are calling it naked. What do we wear? 
and we couldn't find anything that is good to wear. <laughs> That's when we kind of retreated from being totally amongst the, right. the exhibition to a, a particular kind of a corner. The room was always there, right. but the original idea was much more like we are like a piece of sculpture on a thing, right. you know, and people can walk around it, yeah. which we're not, we have given up the yeah. minute we decided mm. that we are physically naked. And it's, I think, a lot of people, <clears throat> uh, when they hear a work of naked performers, they assume a certain kind of erotic subtext or a certain kind of Im improper, you know, something that will be, that they're, ch that, you know, young people have to stay away from and things. And it, in the experience this morning, and uh, whenever you have performed um, being naked, it's always had this kind of purity about it. And, and you know, it's not about an eroticism or um, it, there's a, and there's, your roles often feel at times human, at times animal, at times almost object-like, and, and I wondered if you want to talk about that at all. Yeah. Particularly this one, like this, this naked one, even I look at it, I'm the, you know, when mm. I did you make a movement, mm. I'm checking your movement, mm. right, you know, mm. I see you. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> Actually, it's very beautiful. The landscape yeah. of the body. The yeah. body is, yeah. you know, it's beautiful, it's, you know. And uh, also, when you're doing the theater, mm. in the theater where you become naked, mm. sometimes when I see your naked body in mm. the theater, you know, mm. on the stage, mm. um, I feel kind of what's uh, I got extra, I got um, um, extra push, huh? push. I should say push no, extra. Yeah, show bits, <laughs> show bits, or some smell, you know, some performance smell. Oh yeah, yeah. Smell, we have a performance smell, right? Performance smell, you know. Right. Yeah. I can feel right. it. Right. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Her skin, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. In the, in this gallery, in the, in the new piece, new new naked time piece, I feel more uh, like babies taking a nap. You know that mm -hmm. kind of feeling. Right. You know, right. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or uh, old person. You know, she knows already she cannot get out of her bed anymore, but just right. she finally she realized, okay, the rest of the, my life, you know, I've, I have to, still I have to enjoy my life on this bed, mm. you know, that right. kind of feeling. Right. So I don't, I, agony, agony, I'm sorry, mm, agony, mm, mm. agoniness. Usually I, I feel, even from your nakedness, mm. you know, on the stage, mm. I feel some kind of agony feeling, mm. but here, I, don't feel that. I think that, especially because my body is a little strange, that's, that's you know, cool. so in a drama, mm. dramatic oh, context, yeah. even oh. though I don't mean to, but I mm -hmm. project agony. Many right. people say, you know, and sometimes it works, and sometimes uh -huh. maybe too much for certain people. Yeah. Not that I'm really like totally agonized person, it's just like my body in a certain angle. Uh -huh. Right. But here, early on, not so early on, about a month or two ago, mm -hmm. when we were rehearsing and we got a few people coming, and we kind of decided by talking to them, the kind of people that we talk about the content, this piece is not about, like, this is reaching to something. You know, it's not about reaching to something. Right. It's not about wanting to something. It really is about, oh, I used to want something. Huh. You know, rather than, oh, I want now. Or like what I'm lacking. No, instead of like, oh, I don't even remember what I lacked. Do you see it as a later life <laughs> kind of work in a certain way then? Uh, or the beginning it? of life. As or the beginning said, of life. It could be right. a baby, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. It's still not, it's not agonized dream reflecting what a hard day you had today or what yeah. a bad mother you had. You know, it's right. not, it's not, <laughs> not, it's like it could be either end of something yeah. or like more broken. Right. Or even the body that is, um, um, you know, getting rotten. Mm -hmm. It's even the movement. It's not that ugly when you think about it. Yeah. You know, there are still kind of movement continues. So it's very much not like Eka and Koma getting together and do something about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's not at right. all. Like that. Yeah. And when, you're, when the movements slowly come mm -hmm. and you get within a few, in, an inch or a few centimeters mm -hmm. of touching, but you actually don't, mm -hmm. there's this, there's just one toe and a knee. It, it really generates a kind of 
a kind of uh, beautiful intensity. Yeah. And, uh, also, movement is speed wise. You know, speed wise. Yeah. You know, you, as you notice, maybe you, maybe you, we dance, we are moving a little bit faster than usual. Yeah. Uh, no, no, opposite. Yes. You're opposite. opposite. <laughs> You're so slow. I'm totally slow. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm, I'm really, I was, <laughs> I'm really, I was doing very fast. I'm really, oh, that's why Pete, uh, um, Mark said you are oh. too human today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm really because going. Because I thought, you know, usually in museum, you know, no. they come only two minutes or three minutes, you know. Some people <laughs> stayed only 30 seconds. <laughs> so I thought I have to show this, that, that. No, I'm really not doing that. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> So well, down when I was yeah. watching, it yeah. seemed oh. like you guys were, had, your timing was, was we had time all worked out. Yeah. Worked out. Yes, yes. Well, I think what we are trying to do is, we are not really saying too many different things. Koma is saying, yeah. anyone can come in any time. Right. So he doesn't, you know, because in the theater, <coughs> usually we have, like, we have to prepare the audience. Sure. We have to kind of turn around a little bit, and mm -hmm. then we have to bring them back. There is this thing is going on. Right. We don't have that. Right. Scale. You're not working with a dr dramatic arc. In so in way. a way, we don't want to disappoint someone. We don't want to be like a dead body. Yeah, that's right. You know, when they come in. Sure. You know. Living installation. Right. So in a way, I am constantly moving. Yeah. But I'm moving so much less than what I would do. So yeah. It's in a big stage area. Right, in a big stage. Yeah. And I'm, oh, actually, one thing that Koma said, which is, I think is important, is we are very close to the people. So even <coughs> so little I do, right? Is a lot. It's very amplified. Yeah. Is a lot. And this project, Naked, is a is a significant part of your three year retrospective. It has become so. Uh, it, yes. <laughs> uh, but the retrospective will go over many um, institutions, many cities, mm -hmm. over the next two and a half years, um, and it began last spring at Wesleyan University. Well, actually, um, it's uh, 2009 spring. Oh, two, so that's, that's right. right. Two thousand nine. You mean when um, was that? The the first meeting with all yes, the people getting together. Yes, that was the first right. gathering meeting. Right. But just when you did your exhibition. That's the uh, two thousand nine four. Yes. Right. And, and the New York had its first uh, uh, retrospective project this May. Yeah. Indian Space Project. Yeah. So now it's been. Now we're actually in the midpoint. Uh huh. In the three years project. So we have a, a, a short video that you made oh, okay. around the early part yes. of the retrospective. And I think it does a wonderful job. It's about 10 minutes long. We hope, um, be patient. We'll be right back to the conversation. But, uh, Sounds we like TV. <laughs> feel like TV. <laughs> um, and so let's see um, a little bit of this, of, of this retrospective um, video piece. You know, 35 years ago, <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> sort of a high court. We are sorting out 35 years of, you know. Mess? Old mess or, you know, dirty laundries, you know. Time is not even, space is not empty. So let's say this white canvas, when we buy it, it's, a, it's like a plain surface. By scorching it, there's a traces of human activity, some distraction, some cooking, some landscape. We are more interested in this Trace of fire because our ancestor somehow they found how to make a fire. So after discovering making a fire, you know, of course they find new pleasure. After hunting, you know, they could cook another animals because people invented how to make a fire, also lots of tragedy happened. So in a way we are tracing our human beings' histories through this project.
the idea of the retrospective project is in certain ways to looking back and in certain ways thinking and deciding what you want to share or what we want to share and how and then what it means <laughs> sharing. We know we have videos, we have photos, we have sets, we have some motifs that we tend to come back to. So maybe what we bring into retrospective the marks and some reminiscent and some memories of our works. You know, contemporary world, it's when you go to Starbucks or Macy's, you don't think what it says, what it says. So, you can give audience some kind of notion, what it says, why, why is it doing this, what it says. If I can give them that kind of notion, I'm you know, more than happy. I think it, it's interesting to feel the inside by looking at outside and feel the outside by looking at inside or having been inside. You know, sometimes we wonder why we are making outside in uh, inside because we can just go outside. But there's something about it. It's like going different place within a building. It's interesting to think about the human bodies in relationship to other bodies. You know, the scale is different, some function is different. We look different sometimes, but sometimes may, our difference may not be <laughs> as big as uh, people think we are. You know, the 30 some years can be very long time, but it's not as long as some turtles, which can live hundreds of years but very long compared to flies, which can only live so short time. So I think, you know, that, that kind of relativeness. It is a long time, but it is also not so long time. So obviously the centerpiece is, is Raven. This sense of rectangle feels like a, a cutting board of a cook. This is also the plate for us as a performer, as, as food. In a way, I'm expecting through in those 60 minutes some mysterious unknown moment which, you know, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't anticipate. I couldn't expect. 
as a performer, if we don't look for that kind of moment, in a way, we have no reason to do this. You know, it's very hard to describe, but you know, if I can describe it, I don't need dance. In the performing arts, it's a little unusual for artists to decide to do a retrospective. Um, and uh, first, why did you decide? And also, what has it given you in this couple of years now that you've been archiving your work and thinking about your past? No, first was wasn't our idea. You know, <laughs> We're you know, repeating all friend. those things. It's not our idea. <laughs> our old friend Sam Mira, you know, he's a producer of this. You know, he's a wonderful dance um, yeah. sort of activist and producer. He used to run Jacob's Pillow yeah. and, and the New England it's Foundation for the Arts. So one morning he came up. Yes, yeah, course. and I thought he was crazy. Uh, you know, and I said, I basically said like, I'm not that old or something like that. Yeah. And he said, no, this is something I really have always wanted the contemporary art centers network getting together and really give a profile to a performing artist. Mm -hmm. And he very much wanted audience and viewers have the, the similar experience when we go to see the filmmakers or the, the visual artist exhibition where you really had a sense of, oh, I know this artist work. Mm -hmm. You know, you really have that. You may not understand it, but there's access to it. Mm -hmm. And that's how he you know, explained it to us. Then I kind of went home and I said to our older son, you know, Sam is really talking this strange thing. And he said, well, if Sam is saying it, you should do it. <laughs> you know? And it sounds like we really are taking somebody's idea, but we really usually don't. So this is a very rare occasion, you know, that, that I was telling um, Philip the other day. We seldom listen to the people, pretty, pretty bad. But there are people that we have built a relationship with, you know, and especially because we cannot see what we do when we are both performing. There are uh, uh, people that I, I may not agree everything, but I would take a few minutes really to think about before I say no. Mm -hmm. So he definitely is the kind of person, so was you. So we kind of, well, let me think about it. And, um, but it do you think it's something that other art performing artists will emulate? And what is it? Well, some, some basically said, do it because your work is so visual, and when you do it, as artists can also, this becomes a pilot project. Right. Which I think kind of 
pushed my trigger, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, because it, those people had been helping us, right. and if we can be a pilot, you know, mm -hmm. we can fail, but still I thought it's, an, it's, it's something we can try. Right. And it made sense to me that he came to us because we are two, we are small, we are easy. It's something right. that I know that he knew right. that he can kind of handle to, to talk about it. Yeah. But things really started to take place in April 2009 when we actually gathered for the first time 38 people, including mm -hmm. you and uh, uh, more than several curators from different parts. And then our old friend mm -hmm. said, my God, this is a retrospective. Mm -hmm. Meaning that human relations that we have built mm -hmm. and a very deep looking they have exemplified. So I thought, well, if they're willing, maybe I can learn from their history of watching mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So that was, I think, was more the impetus. By having a sense that you had collaborators around the table and things. And I'm, I have to take an opportunity to mention that we've been working together on a, on a catalog, mm -hmm. a, a, a really re a, a survey of your work. Right over these 35 years, which will be published next year, and will continue to serve as a, as a kind of document for the retrospective. Um, and that's been, for us, an interesting process as well, and really inspiring, because there's a lot of history of publication and scholarship around the visual arts, but not as much in dance or in performance mm -hmm. work. Um, I mean, the Philip <coughs> and the Walker had these two major contributions, really, which, you know, in addition to all the things that you have been doing with us. This catalog publication is 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 quite unheard of. Mm -hmm. You know they're going to catalog all the works we have ever made so far, and I first my reaction was like, who wants to read that book? But then <laughs> many people said, no, no, you don't say this. I think the book will be made and <laughs> and, and it will be it will be something for a few people who had been watching us for a long time. It's something that they can have. And it's uh, something that the new people, new audience can get access to, the, something we have done before, mm. which I thought was good. So thank you very much for mm. the walker, whoever the well, walker. You've, and there's been some wonderful writers um, mm. who have, uh, are writing some essays for right. it. And we are working with a wonderful, wonderful uh, designer and a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, editor. editor. So yeah. we, couldn't, we couldn't have been happier in mm. terms of the team of the people we are working mm -hmm. with, publication people. When I'd asked you earlier uh, in an email um, sort of interview about, um, about the installation Naked and, and your work in that, in that way, you talked about the body offering uh, a form of radical questioning, um, questioning as a state of being. Could you explain that a little more? Come on, edit. And he said, Eko, I have no idea what you are it's one of those things I said, well, he said, like, you have to talk about what the body means. And I said, body is body. So I had to kind of, I basically said, you know, body, sometimes, you know, you, you know, like sometimes if you see this alone, you never know with a contemporary art if this is this size grass or it's a huge, huge grass or a very small grass. So the human body gives a scale. Uh, right? That's right. sometimes when you shoot a, take a photograph next to the Grand Canyon or something, so that it, the human right, size right. always gives a scale. That's uh -huh. a very elemental thing. Yeah. And sometimes human body also gives a scale of time. Hmm. So five years ago, you kind of look the same. So you're not a very good example. <laughs> but somebody else looks very different. Yeah. So the you know, human being it really gives that sense of time. Right. You know? yeah. And so it also gives a kind of question, how come that? Philip looks the same that I don't. You know, this, all that, <laughs> that practical kind of right. questions. It's not fair. The time is not moving <laughs> even. So I'm really talking about very easy fundamental level, uh -huh. but also because picture stays, yeah. but they don't really stay because yeah. they also change. Do, does it also, do you also refer to it as, you know, your training in dance and that, that often the culture or other art forms don't trust the body as having a knowledge of its own, you know, a sort of body wisdom. Um, that many people say. I've read that. Mm -hmm. I'm really not sure. Uh -huh. I'm the, the kind of person who wants to say body has all the wisdom. Of course we, we, we yeah. do. Uh -huh. But we also forget a lot, too. Right. You know? And the cell changes, too. Yeah. But the DNA, people can say. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Kama? You know, we are movement artists. You know. So, you know, 
in the theater or in the gallery, we have to keep moving our body. Mm. So to the right or up and down, you know. Yeah. And uh, and so. Yeah. So. That was interesting. So when we are moving our body, you know, um, sometimes our, or most of the time, our head has to be empty. Mm. You know, we have, especially nowadays, I have to follow, I have to say, I have to uh, remember only one thing, just go up. Mm. And uh, otherwise, you forget. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> I forget. What do you mean, go up? Uh, oh? <laughs> do you mean physically? Um, physically, go up. Uh -huh. You know, I cannot think uh, something else. You know, oh, you know I'm very philosoph philosophical things. Yeah. So you know, oh, uh, even practical. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> what well, even practical things? Practical things. So it's it's very simple. So like, you know, even though you are called, uh, we call movement artists, sometimes I feel oh, my occupation is the same as a uh, uh, fisherman or farmers in you know, food mm. and small, you know, the rice fields, just, you know, two, you know, male and female. You know. Nowadays, those kind of, you know, uh, the farmer disappeared, you know, mm. but all day, all days, you know, just, right. fa you know, family, you know, family runs, you know, farmers. Mm. Or, uh, or sometimes you can find it, you know, the papa and the mama runs a pizza, pizza shop, not mm -hmm. pizza restaurant, right. pizza shop. You know, what they're thinking is they keep moving, in the, you know, right. like this, and the mama is counting all the money like this, you know. And when people come, <laughs> more this. <laughs> more this. But when we're doing this, we cannot think, <laughs> so think about philosophical things. <laughs> If we do think, <laughs> think something else, no, no. No. this goes somewhere else, <laughs> you know. So it's a very simple, simple person. That's what I want to say. Very simple. But when that simple person is obviously there, yeah. it actually, without saying anything, yeah. it sometimes poses some kind of a question to the money system or, you know, I right. mean, somebody like walks into this very expensive looking restaurant. Mm. That's kind of odd, right? Because right. everybody knows that person doesn't belong here. <laughs> and all that price system mm. kind of get a little bit, almost becomes so superficial. Yeah. Everybody knows this weird feeling about somebody just walked in, he doesn't belong there. Yeah. Mm. But then it's almost like, so why do we belong there? Yeah. There's a little odd feeling, right. you know, and sometimes as being in a, uh, in a museum, yeah, in a, a weekend, gallery. many people said uh, after they were in our room, they would go back to the Nemo gallery. Yeah. They, they had this feeling about what if a kind of creep out from the gallery <laughs> and to the different part, and it just makes the other art looks a little weird in a relationship. Huh. You know, it's not yeah. valuing more or less value. Yeah, it's just um, it's awkward. Hmm. And I like it. Yeah. It's that kind of, it's not so much about a uh, uh, theoretical question. It's like, what's that? Yeah. You know? And sometimes you ask that, what's that question in having Sorry. some stranger. Yeah. What's it's that? like, I, yeah. I love your response. Um, the piece you saw in the film, Raven, was the launch of our, of our component of the right. retrospective project of about three weeks ago. And you performed for about 400 people mm -hmm. over two performances. Mm -hmm. Lots of young children as mm -hmm. part of our Free for Saturday. And, and the Q&A afterward, you said, um, I hope that um, when you three and four year olds you know, are, are very old, uh, 90 or something, you, that you'll remember that you saw something very weird mm -hmm. here at the Walker mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that it will still be with you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it sounds like that in the, in the gallery, you know, it's a sort of, it's sort of an oddness, an, a, a, an unexpectedness mm. that you're hoping to create mm. that will change people's perspective mm. about what else they see. Mm -mm. And also, since you now mentioned Raven, yeah. Naked is very much coming from Raven. Raven, which was your last theatrical work. Right, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's like I almost said when we were, I was visiting about a year ago, because we already had Raven, it's almost like we crushed compressed and made it so Raven. into the naked. Yeah, right. You know, the material yeah. is there, you'll see the feathers and you'll see the material, but it's in a very different mm -hmm. right. form. Right. 
You know, it's interesting you ref refer to yourself as movement artists, but historically you've always designed the physical yeah. landscape. You've 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 often designed the lighting. Yeah. You create. You're kind of you're kind of all around artists mm -hmm. that create the entire visual uh, experience that someone has and movement experience. Do you also consider yourself visual uh, artists as well? I mean, could you have imagined in the track of your careers having been embraced um, by the visual art world in the way that you, when you landed in New York, were embraced by the dance world and you became dance artists in that way? Well, embrace is always nice. Yeah. I don't diffuse that. But I think um, so we always made set. We always made costumes, mm -hmm. and it kind of shocking to me because I we never say that usually on the program note because yeah. we take it granted. And then like sometimes people call me, oh I loved your set design. Who designed oh, your set? Know, <laughs> can I have the email or you know address? And you know we did that because we've always done that, mm -hmm. right? So it, it's very much what we have always done. Mm -hmm. But now we are at a certain age, as like in a witness experience. If I step out. And look at this. Like right after we perform Raven, it's beautiful because mm -hmm. there's a trace of mm -hmm. our movement there. Mm. It's beautiful before because, of course, they try to make it beautiful because that's what the first thing people see. Mm -hmm. But then after we move, it's interesting to me. It's almost like a, a scene of crime. Mm. And I wonder, and I don't know exactly how to do this, is how I wonder if there could be a people like myself seeing this, oh, I don't know who, but somebody moved here. Hmm. And there is this sense of energy. That if, stays with the yeah, environment. Right. So if I wonder if there could be something that can be appreciated or make uh, some kind of connection to the people, hmm. with, it's not like take, it's not like comma and I, or comma becomes, because he's much more visual, comma becomes a painter, more like we, we did something with it. But knowing what after, is there anything there to be helped mm. or to be seen again? Mm. That's, that is interesting to and us. And uh, after you leave us, another part of the retrospective is you'll be, you'll be creating some installations at the Museum of Contemporary Art in right. Chicago that won't involve your bodies. Right. So well, even here, let's say, if we are not in that room, like Thursday morning, right. you know, because Thursday night we perform The six later. hours on Thursday start at 3 in the afternoon. Right. And so I'm right, be very uh, curious for you to come back to the room. When you're not there. Right. Because we'll keep the, you know. Keep it and open. then how this energy of remain. Right. And I would love to hear how curators or uh, uh, audience would feel about it. Mm. That will be interesting, yeah. You know, um, when I look back at our history... Also, uh, but yeah. the difference is, you know, the, you know, if somebody comes on Saturday morning, yeah. you know, you cannot touch Andy Warhol's painting, right. but our, you know, it's called physical environment, you know, it's touchable. Touchable, mm. you can, people can touch it. You don't want people to disturb not to it too much, right? no, 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 I'm taking the environment, which uh -huh. Yeah, you have the drop. You, drop. you can touch it. When you come, you can touch it. If you, you, know, you are using a lot of feathers or uh, some sea salt, so you want to take it home, you can take it home, some feathers. You know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a different from uh, the... We'll have to talk to our registrar. So <laughs> Jasper Jones broom. You can you can use a broom, that is broom, you know. So that's why I go. Our mind cheap. cheap. We are cheap. We are cheap. We are cheap. We like it cheap. We really like it cheap. We do, we so why cheap? Because there's something very attracting about being but cheap. You know, somebody says very interesting you say Seiko. Well I was the usually cheap, yes. Yeah. But for this physical environment, yeah. so far I spent about at least three thousand dollars. Okay? I got, I got oh, come, come, on, come, but, on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. But, echo, echo. but Jasper Jones, yeah. material, okay, I'm talking materials alone. Cheap. Materials alone, I spent $3,000 for my, our physical environment. 30. But Jasper Jones, he spent about only brooms and $35, <laughs> dollars echo. But price is so different. I know, I know. You know, he spent $35, we spent $3,000 echo. We've spent much more. Much more? 
I have the, all the credit. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, it doesn't come a whisper. <laughs> no, no, I know. What, what's so interesting about this performing art is oh, many people may find it interesting. Is, mm -hmm. I mean, for the presenter's point of view, it's very expensive to produce. Yes. Yeah. You know, the writing, the, even the material, because we have to do the try and error. Lots, right. It's a lot of time lots eating. Lots of things. Yeah. Lots of assistants, lots of yeah. people. Even I drove, you know, I drove from New York City. So I brought big, so this environment is very heavy. It's all done in New York City. So I got a uh, trailer, black box trailers. And your son? Can My you son, right. I did yeah. three days, or two days, I mean two days trip from New York. And then you arrive here, and then there's a expensive, <laughs> expensive trailers yeah. with expensive stuff. <laughs> they arrive, right? So they're really cheap. We just come, <laughs> right? But there's something about this that but, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but people are laughing, <laughs> I know. Because we, you know, when we came here, we are dragging our, our, our uh, art piece <laughs> on the street. <laughs> 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 You know, $4,000 uh, in terms of materials, <laughs> dragging, uh, stepping on. And they're kicking it. Kicking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to Because it's not that that master's uh, brush stroke. It's really, it was, it's, it's every time we spend, it's, it's almost like a spiritual in a way. Sure. But that's why we can kick it, because yeah. spirit, spirit yeah. doesn't, doesn't freak out. But it, it also, doesn't it tie it as well uh, to... That was a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> You've historically, uh, I, th I think, uh, always stood against a kind of um, elitism, and uh, and you've you've uh, you've referenced a aesthetics yeah. of unreasonableness and a poor a sort of poor theater that, and so part of your your populism, your commitment to a sort of democratic, getting your work out to as many people as possible, making yeah. it free, th that's all tied to using everyday materials and natural uh, elements and things like that, is it? Which not? is natural using natural element uh, stuff. Actually, ends up being most expensive in a way because <laughs> everything gets rotten and everything kind of goes down. Right. Um, but you know, at this point, I think it would be nice to have some trailer coming to pick it up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but sometimes we wonder, you know, uh -huh. we, why we are doing this and somebody is being picked up. But then we understood, yes, that's uh, this is how we started, and, yeah. and we never tried to change it. Right. So it's not. We say this as a joke because it, we are not blaming anyone. Mm -hmm. We just feel that's how we started. This is how we are. Yeah. You led the DIY movement. <laughs> uh, right. This is very <laughs> much like yeah. how we are. Yeah. Yeah. We are getting a little bit older, but still we can do it. You know? yeah. Still we can do it. In yeah. Driving, making a set, I can do it. You know, we are not cheap. We, are, we like also. We like Inex to. Yeah. I, I'm not complaining. I like no, to No, no, I, I, I yeah. joked. Right. Well, I like to drive. <laughs> I can see the no, you don't, no, you said, you said you're hiring. But, I, go, I, I like to, <laughs> you know, I like to design my costume. Yeah. You know, I like to because make Because even you know, if you had all the money I, in the I, world, I lots of passion you wouldn't me. want to be hiring outside. No, it seems not like when it's $8,000. You know, well, and also, yeah. it seems that you have a sense of, of wanting but to so, control you know, the. There's a sense of balance here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yes, it, it's true. Or the same time, yeah. Even, yeah. yeah. I know your characters. Like, yeah. And don't reveal something don't, bad. I know you. Oh, you, know, you, you know, even the right whatever you know, you do the things uh, you like the best when you did the best when you did your thing when you did the job yourself that you think that you consider that's your best one like cooking. Mm. <laughs> or uh, washing, mm. you know, whenever I wash your things, mm. you say, oh, I rather want to, you know, wash your things. <laughs> no, I don't mind your washing. <laughs> well, but yeah. you look very happy when you wash your things, especially when you're uh, Yeah, Japan, yeah, I'm happy, yeah, I'm happy. When you're uh, washing dry, yeah. and you dry it under the sun, you know, you put the rope from yeah. there. There's a sense of the, like this, you know, the, the attending this, uh, your own life. So you, when I join, oh, don't, don't, don't bother. This I, is my most peaceful moment in yeah, that, that's yeah. everybody. That's kind of, yeah, sure. That's that's everybody else. And I think what we try to extend that to yeah. our both the professional oh, life and the artistic life. And I have to ask this question yeah. um, because I've known you for a long time. And um, how is it to? You have such a great relationship, it seems. But you're very honest with each other. <laughs> and uh, how is it to both 
create work, to have your ar artistic partner also be your life partner yeah. for so many years. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, entangled, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Today is, you know, the, the talking dance. Yeah. But, you know, of course, you know, dance is not related to life, especially we live together. Yeah. You know, we make dance together, we perform together. So, you know, we're supposed to talk, talking dance means also we have to talk about life, but, you know, we don't want to talk about life. Right? Well, just basically, it's, we live together because that's, that's the only way we know how to do it, yeah? Yes. Um, it's simpler, it's mm -hmm. cheaper, and you know, we have a family together. But we also spend, try to spend some time alone, mm -hmm. you know? For example, I, I don't necessarily want to go to see a movie with Koma. Mm -hmm. I usually go alone. Yeah. Because I know him well enough that I don't want him to kind of feel, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know how he would react mm -hmm. to this. Right. And it's like, I don't want, you know, I want to yeah. be alone. <laughs> but if I see something and I know I, I, I'm going to make a reference, sure that I'm really ask, would you please, please? And at that point, he said, why do I have to go? And right. I said, no, no, this is very important to me. Would you please go? And I would always ask. And mm. he would always share with me, not always, but sometimes, mm. the things that he found is as the internet or talk, he talked to someone. Creative inspiration. Well, because you never know the line. Yeah. At that point, it's not like, I know I'm going to use this for the dance, therefore, please go to see. No, it's more like, I was very moved by this. Please yeah. go to see. Uh. Right. So that we have the same reference point. Sure, yeah. Right, so that's how. Yeah. And sometimes we don't talk in the night. Yeah. Yeah. We are yeah. reading. Especially right. this sure. one, you know. Yeah. This project, you know. Six hours yeah. together. Six hours, not, not this yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We are here, yeah. but the same <laughs> right. bit, like this, this mm. distance, mm. always together. So, you know, I asked you, yes, please. Uh, book the hotel. Two bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Two bedroom. Who is the living room? Uh, yeah. Sleep separately in the evening. Yes. Uh, yes. Right. You're together all day. Yeah. Right. It's within like within inches enough of each is other. Enough. Yes. Uh, right. So I, I <laughs> <laughs> we need uh, lots of compensation. And, you know, yeah. Compensation. Yeah. yeah we need to kind of balance things out. We yeah. Can't sure. Just go. Right. Way. Which often yeah. we do. Yeah. You know, just much of the fact we are touring together. <clears throat> so we are very careful. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask, um, you know, your work has so often, it's really been very much immersed in natural, natural elements, organic material. There's a sense of connectedness, almost timelessness to the earth and the planet. And, um, and I wondered if your, A, like where that came from, your sense, you know, in your younger years, what, what made you, it seems like your work has always been very tied to, um, to, this, to this sort of organic sense uh, and, and natural sense of, of, the, of the earth in general. And did, was that something that came from your upbringing? And that, um, or, is, or do you feel a, a sort of unique connection to the, to the planet at large, to organi an organic sense of the, our surroundings? Earth. Oh. Sometimes I wonder, you know, because we live in New York City. Yeah, you live in Midtown York, Manhattan. Yeah. One block away from Times Square. You know? <laughs> right. We live on the 29th floor, you know, right. you know, the, you know my Avenue Street, the constant, you know, people, people, people. <laughs> right. you know? Maybe, maybe because, because of that. Maybe because of that. Maybe because of that. Oh, maybe hmm. so. Hmm. But you know, uh, you said upbringing. I'm pretty sure there is a lot to do mm -hmm. that because we live in New York City. We live outside of our own country. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what command I can go back to together is our common memories. Now, we did not know each other. So we cannot share something specific thing that, that happened to me or coma. Right. So we share a lot about, oh, you know, the rice field used to be this mm -hmm. or this. So that's something, we, it's a common did you spend right. time in the country, both of you? Mm -hmm. well, you grew up in very different kind of 1948, parts. 1948, 1952, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's a very different kind of Japan. Sure. And it's a kind of Japan that so radically changed. Yeah. So that's something we, we can kind of tap ourselves into. Mm -hmm. We also, because um, when we were young, 
like shortly after we came to America, we did like a belly dancing. We did a, a kind of like rock and roll kind of a thing. Not really rock and roll, but we worked with Glenn Branca, for example. Oh yeah. You know, right. so we did those Glenn things. Glenn Branca is a composer who uses uh, you know, sort of the so army of electric So those things were very different. Yeah. And we did that, and we got okay. Now we've done that. Hmm. So now we went back to the kind of thing that I think it was. Echo. Yeah. Now, thank you very much. Now, echo. Oh. I got it. Got it. Why you pick up in a natural in a drum? Yeah. As a natural singer, mm. you know, I mean, some artists, you mm. know, get some you know, story from Greek, Greek story, mm. or right? Mm. Mm. You know, when you bring up those kind of stories, mm. you know, things. Sometimes we quote it, you know, we even do. we're watching the movie. Oh, I like that movie, I like that. You know, oh, I hate it, I hate it. Right. <laughs> but we, when we think about the same, watching the same river or mountains, you know, we don't make any quote it. No we argument, no argument. No, no argument. Huh. Maybe that's why. Huh. You know, we have made the trees. Mm -hmm. So under the big trees, we don't need to make arguments. Mm. I am a tree, I, I'm a big tree trunk. You know, so I pretend like, like this. For example, you, know, I'm the, you don't do that. <laughs> but I'm the, I'm, I'm simplified. I simplified. Or I'm the uh, the roots of the big trees. Mm. So I do like this, mm. like this, mm. and you are the tree branch. Mm. And upstairs you do like this. You know, and then no argument. Yeah. You know. It's a good reason to do it. Yeah. And speaking of, um, of your connection to the to to nature and to the planet. Um, there's a lot of highlights, which we don't have time to talk about, unfortunately, of your time with us here uh, in Minneapolis. Uh, but one of the, I think, pivotal pieces that we were involved with as a co-commissioner was a piece called River, mm -hmm. which in some ways was, was really um, was a, was a, a major jump into mm. site-based producing work, producing work outside of theatrical settings Absolutely. and in a natural setting. Yes. Um, and you, you created that work, and I think it had quite a profound influence even beyond your own work to other artists and things. We did it here in Medicine Lake. Medicine Lake mm -hmm. in, in 1996. Mm -hmm. And we have just, uh, and, and then soon after this, we'll, we'll turn to questions. But I'd love to show just a couple of minutes, minutes. of a piece called River. Um, this, was, uh, a this was a short excerpt from a longer um, film work about the making and the creation of, and of a, only a rehearsal river. Part. And this yeah. is a rehearsal section. It typically happened in the evening, so we'll take a quick look at it. It is in this river we conceived our river project. We all arrive at the Delaware River. We are excited with this huge river. Our driftwood creates a frame in the river. In that frame, we see the same river a little more accentuated.
ってさ、これこれ、これがね、熱いよ。これが熱いで、これから引くから。また。A different river is a different environment. Working there, we learn this new river. Okay, keys! Let's go ahead, rock and roll! Go back to the, bring back to this. Let's go back and roll! <laughs> so, he has, he has to come back. Those of you who may not have seen this work,、um, it concludes as the sun is setting, dusk is coming, it's getting darker, and, and in the end, you slowly just slip away down, down the river. And、uh, it was. The DVDs on the sale. On the oh, the DVDs on sale in the shop. So, <laughs> yeah, usually, it's a very simple piece. You know, usually, it's about one hour.、Yeah. You know, dusk time, we appear from upstream.、Yeah. Then we dance in front of the people about one hour. Then we disappear to downstream. You know, it's a very、yeah. simple piece. It's almost people, like you come watching, out of nowhere and you depart. I like this piece very、yeah. much. It's a very beautiful piece. So, this is a chance to,、uh, now um, uh, to take some of your questions for Eiko and Koma. Maybe bring and let, we'll bring the house lights up a little bit.、Um, anyone who'd like to ask anything, feel free.、Um, I see a hand right here.、Yeah. You know, That's a,、uh, that's a good question. And, and if, actually, if there's, I'm going to take maybe any questions that we might have and kind of take them all at once, three or four questions.、Um, and then we're going to let, have the artists kind of answer them kind of collectively. And,、uh, so I'll jot down the questions. And any, any other questions that、um, someone may like to ask right now? Yes? Mm. Okay. Can, we, can we see two more questions? And that will be the end of it.、Uh, yes. Was there somebody that I saw? I'm、oh, sorry, I thought I saw a hand. Well, we, yes. Can you talk about your relationship to light in your work? Right. Light.、Mm. That's right. Any other last、uh, question? This is a new approach.、Uh, Eiko has had said, let's try it this way. So, this is a, I know it's a little unusual to ask questions、uh, before、mm-hmm. others are answered, but you、um, if you have something that's dying to ask, yeah? Okay.、Uh, Eiko and Koma, can you talk about dealing with the body, with your bodies in naked? Because the body isn't a very neat thing. Like it, It's, it excretes things and it has leaking and other,、mm. Mm. other like illnesses and things. So,、mm. dealing with it with a month、yeah. or working for a month and how your body、mm. is go- changing and in rehearsals、right. and things. Those are awesome good questions. Really、yeah. great questions. Yeah. So, what would you like take, to start take with? Take what、like, whatever you like. Thank you. I can take the easiest one, and then you can think. The way we met, we, we didn't meet until I was 19 and Kuma was 23. And we met in the same studio where I first went to、so like、study dance, so to speak. And we didn't stay there very long time. So、mm-hmm. after three months, Kuma basically said, Well, let's leave here.、Mm. And shall we work together? You said you were not very good students or disciples.、Mm. So. Right. So that's how we met.、Um, But then it was kind of a coincidence that we had a, a, a same sort of a background in a similar, I wouldn't say same because the age difference weighed very heavy at that point.、Uh-huh. But we had a similar interest in and, and sort of a, we are student activity, heavy.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
uh, life and we were both not a very happy moment of our lives. You know, it was a very exhausted part of our life. And so that's how we met and we started to work together. And since then, it just has been on. So that's one question, to the one, uh, one answer to the question. Yeah. And uh, can I continue that story? Sure, <laughs> sure. You know? And we named our company name Echo and Coma. You know, sounds a little bit stupid. 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 <laughs> <That's laughs> As company, Eco I, I just thought you know. coming here, I yeah. thought, oh, if I knew yeah. I was going to be in a worker for one month, yeah. I would have yeah. made a, a little so better name. If, uh, you are, if, you are, <laughs> if you are more serious, you could yeah. think about, you know, spirit to move, or, you know, something, you know, <laughs> some more, you know, little bit you know, highly. You but know. why? Why Eco and Coma? Because we had no intention to continue that company. You know. <laughs> It was where everything started with the young, young kids, um, mischievous. Right, mischievous. Mischievous, pretty much mischievous. But at the same know. time, you know, this was in the late 60s, early 70s. You know, there were like um, Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> and there's yeah. Yoko oh, and yeah. John, <laughs> right? Yoko and John. Peter well, Paul and Peter Mary. Paul. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people saying, yeah, it's a couple. Yeah, so we, yeah, were, we were not, not the only yeah, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. And, uh, now the other, th oh, I'm sorry, Kama, did you mind? The, you want you, to take you, another, another question? People yeah. also asked about your relationship to light. Yes. And the sort of messiness of the body. And yes. also how you see yourself related to the world of modern, postmodern dance and performance art. I want to do the messiness of the body, okay. if I may. Um, the body is very messy, I, um, but in a way, less so to me once we are in a work. Mm -hmm. That's true on stage, and that's true because we plan white. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong, you know, I may be very messy because right now, like, I'm fighting kind of cold, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, just like you know, when you are trying to have a dinner with someone, you put on white, mm -hmm. right? So you, you know, you even I clean up a little bit the house. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are having a little nice time with a friend, you kind of want to pick up a nice place to meet. Right. So you prepare for that, right? So I think the body is messy, but it's not where I try to share how messy my body is. Right. I'm really trying to welcome people. I'm really using my body as a part of the many things that we have prepared. Mm. So hopefully my body behaves in a way because it is my intention that my body becomes the part of the installation mm -hmm. and actually make it lively, you know, and, and, and remind you that, that we are very much together with body to body base, eye to eye, hand to hand to base. And we are no different from your body. I don't have to behave our body to be a dancer's body, mm -hmm. as you saw. This piece is really not about the theory about the body or about we are dancers. It's really about a bottom line of the body. But only difference is we, we had been preparing about this conceptually and physically. So, the messiness of the body is granted because that we have it in common. And one month is so much more closer to our death or so much far away from our birth. Mm -hmm. But I hope that there's a little sense of both very practical but a little sense of abstraction in a way that becomes a, a tiny bit transcending. Mm. I don't want to be transcending too much, <laughs> but a little sense of... Uh, and that also brings the question to the light as well. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should talk about relations. Yeah. Anything relation. you want to do? Also, just on that last question, you, you do take a 15 minute break in the middle. That's what we plan right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Just our bathroom break so that we don't <clears throat> suffer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, talking about the relation, you know. <clears throat> Often when I teach the workshop, I tell the student, I do the student, you know, you can sleep alone, so you can dream alone, but 
but also once in a while to sleep with other person. Or it's nice sometimes. Or, or something, you know, or even not sleep, but dreaming together. Mm. It's nice, you know. And uh, like, definitely, if even so, I wanted to become a dance artist, a movement artist. I think if I call, recall, I think I couldn't do it by myself. No. I think same things apply to Echo. Mm, absolutely. You know, absolutely. when I met her, Echo even Echo couldn't ride a bicycle. I'm that bad physically. <laughs> And I taught her how to first how to, how to ride a bicycle. Then, then I got two weeks accident. later, then he got a bicycle accident. <laughs> you know, so I was called by her father and why? You know, I don't know. <laughs> and, you know, so, and, um, but also, you know, before I mean, involved in um, um, this kind of movement um, art, I was doing the like even crime, you know, like not judo, but I was doing the kickboxing. Kickboxing. Yeah. I spent. I was. Very physically oriented person, you know. So, but you know, somehow I learned to become a little bit more sensitive from <laughs> echo, you know. <laughs> so, you know, but very so, different. So, it, but you've influenced. Yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah we maybe did, did, some yeah. certain kind of relationship you need. Right. Yeah. And so that where the, again the yeah, messiness of the body too. Koma has a very different body, and I have a very different body. And there's also the maleness and the femaleness of the body. No matter how sometimes we really would like to be more androgynous. So as a movement artist, as a dancer, often we like, we don't want to be bound by I am a female or I am a human being, but we can't help it. It's right there. So in a way, putting all the work with the writing, sometimes you know, that's become more painterly work mm -hmm. because writing is about the colors and about shoes mm -hmm. and uh, like balances. It also accentuate shadows mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. It also accentuate uh, 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 a shape in a mm -hmm. very different way. So we, we know we, writing is very important. And I can't really tell you how thankful we are. This was a major investment. Not investment, because you have to get the money back. So major commitment. <laughs> you didn't invest. You committed. Major commitment to bring writing uh, facility Theatrical to a gallery. Writing. I hope we didn't use it too theatrical because it wasn't that we are trying to make a theater out of it. It was really, I think the worker gave us the tool that we are used to use. So that was a tool that we suppose know somehow how to use. Mm -hmm. And in a gallery setting, that was a kind of hue, the color that we mm -hmm. needed to use. Mm -hmm. And writing has been important not only practically, but almost conceptually, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And like in the river setting, we also see other people. Mm -hmm. Writing is not only us. It's like mm -hmm. how we also share and differentiate. Right. Mm -hmm. It also is accentuate or ignore the distance, which is also very, very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. And the, going back to relations, yeah. and just naked, yeah. we had six hours. Male, male, just, I'm, male in I'm, my body character has very male, Mary macho. Has, macho right. smell, you know. And the echo has a very, you know, female smell, very, very typical yeah. female smell. So it's, so, you know, of course, interesting to see only female one figures in, uh, in the space so close, but to see male and female, male and female figures always same time, you know, to see so closeness, give it some special, you know, implication, you mm -hmm. know. Usually when you see the homeless like me, homeless people, men, you know, they're not naked, but when they're sleeping around on, on the homeless and on the street, you know, oh, okay, sort of you understand, you know. But when you see two figures, male and female, not on the, the gallery, it's not the street, yeah, but you know, to see, you know, figures, I'm sure it gives people some different, you know. Almost, uh, you know, because we're not moving to the relationship, or not, we're not moving away from the relationship. So it's almost like, again, the messiness of the body, which mm -hmm. can also be a smell. Mm -hmm. You know, we, 
we, we do take shower and we're not that dirty, but still there's a kind of sense of the body has its own different smell. The male has a different smell to the female, different kind of uh, 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 skin tones. And that, mm-hmm. I think, is very much there in this piece. Mm-hmm. Which the other was, a, how do you see your, your place in the world of dance? A contemporary art, contemporary art. Contemporary performance and Contemporary and, and performance. Dance. That's a really interesting question. Actually, I think we duck that question in our daily life. No, no, I am trying to be very honest. I'm not ducking the question, but I think in our daily life, it's not a question we ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. It may help for you to understand that we are foreigners here. So to this day, after 35 years, and we are very much a part of you know, the field. I'm not denying you that. You go out and see lots of other dancers and As well as I sit on a certain tables or I, you know, right. I talk to the people. But to, there is a still a sense of we are foreigners, we are strangers. And mm-hmm. we do make a strange work. So I don't really feel it has come to my mind to say, how do I belong here or how do I not belong here? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> when I saw some um, conceptual performance art, mm-hmm. I miss, I miss, not that I don't miss dance, but I, I, I sometimes I feel like I embrace, embrace the feeling of dance more. Mm-hmm. When I see dance, sometimes I feel like, oh, I want to be more like an object. Mm-hmm. You know, so I respond right. differently. Mm-hmm. Um, because after all, I don't think it's my job trying to find a place in whatever the field or the society is. Mm-hmm. I think it's an audience, and there are so many other field people. But I think my job is at least I want to make a kind of art that I want to see. Mm-hmm. That if I am a viewer, I want to see this. And I'm very happy about this naked at this point. I'm very scared, but I'm very happy too. So. I think either the people, artists coming from the conceptual art, which we call this white, white box, and we come from the kind of theater background, which is a black box. Mm-hmm. But by the time I'm dancing in a river, I don't really care where I belong to. Mm-hmm. You know, like there, I'm like saying to the fish or turtles, here I am, come, can I come in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is to their world. But I'm still being in an American dance festival or in a free theater, you know, right. it's in a performing art field. All for them trying to say is, I think it's kind of maneuverish, right? Mm-hmm. Like when I see Joseph Weiss's work, you know, we of course get very attracted. You know, just Marina was a very big presence in New York. Marina, Marina Abramovich. Yes, yes, you know, and of course we, we get engaged in this kind of a talk. And you were, um, when you were last year with Hunger, you were very inspired by Kudos. Work oh, absolutely, you absolutely, and... you know. But again, we should be careful. I don't want to like measure the distance sometimes, right? Because the distance should be breathing. You know, mm. sometimes for certain people we may be very close to this and that, but yeah. I really let it let it be judged that way. Yeah. Um, but this piece in a worker context is a very different than many of the things that we have done in a the theater. But in yet it's the same us, mm-hmm. right? right? So. Um, that's my honest way to responding to that yeah. question. And also we have been, in the last 40 years, we have been very, very active in a movement of an artists. Right. So, you know, you kind of walk over it. You know? We're constantly making new dance, new piece, you know. So, like I said, you know, our daily life is pretty much occupied. Oh, I should do next thing. I should do you know, three o'clock, I should do this. Three right. three, I should do that. So, you know, sometimes we have no space to figure out where we are in the real, in the contemporary art field, you know. Right. I, I don't uh, have those kind of um, brain space, yeah. you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, sure. So it pretty much. But we are still part of something. Yeah. yeah. And I think the way we are trying to be more part of it is us being kind of active mm. in it. You know, I, 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 I absolutely feel there's a kind of colleague. A community of yeah, artists. Right, you know, but we just don't don't analyze it. Right. 
because that's not something I'm, I'm good at yeah. too much. Well, we've really, we've, we've run through our time, but I, I want to, before we leave, to just extend a, a, a very genuine thank you to Eiko and Koma for not just participating in tonight's conversation, but for giving of yourselves so fully for the month of November and to making this beautiful installation naked. Um, and we are so pleased to be part of the retrospective project and to have you back with us. This has been the Gertrude Lippincott Talking Dance um, series and evening. I'd like to say special thanks to Judith Bryn Ingber, who's helped support this series. Um, and yes. Yeah. I, I want to say one thing. Um, we really need uh, people in this community's support for this project. Yeah. Philip was very concerned about, oh, sometimes you don't have a people in the room. <laughs> and I said, we'll be fine. But it'd really be nice if you or your friend or your family can actually show up in the first week, mm. not wait until the third or fourth <laughs> week. <laughs> because then I feel like we are doing something. And then probably even you don't like it, you know, your friend who you came with or a friend you talked to. Well, I think these four weeks is we are kind of really testing how the community kind of respond right. and how each individual respond. And if you end up telling me, oh, I came to see you five times, I will kiss you after all this. <laughs> I, mean, I, th I think this is really giving a, an opportunity for us to actually directly beg people Right. And I'm really begging, because if you don't come, all our work just became a talk. But if you do come, it really becomes real to me. And it's very important, and I cannot s say strongly enough, please come in the first week yeah. and, and come back again. And I think, and I, I would venture to guess that it, when you come, um, that you will want to come back and you will want to tell people who you care about to also come. So that first week is, you don't want to wait until the end and then go, oh, that's right, it's closing tomorrow or something like that. Well, I don't mind your t telling people that you don't like, too. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. Don't well, discriminate. And you know, we'll hang around here. If you have any other questions, feel free to come on up. But thank you for coming, and thank you, Ekon Thank you. Thank you.